Good morning. I'm Pastor Goodman, and this is the Drive to School podcast. Uh, joining me again is Patrick Sturdivant. He is the marketing and exe- uh, marketing and development executive for Higher that Things. I am. That is a long and fancy, illustrious title, my friend. How you doing? Yeah, it, I'm. I'm. I'm well. You know, it really takes up a lot on the name tag. It. Thank God, my email signature is already typed out, so I don't have to type it every time, or that would get really annoying. Fair enough. And, yeah, for sure. <laughs> But yeah, how have you been? How, how are you doing? Drive to School podcast? Doing well. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. We get to sit down with other people and I get to listen for a little while instead of talk, which I've been a big, big fan of. Um, I sure, get to learn from sure. a lot of really cool people. Uh, today, you're going to talk to me about a movie that I haven't seen yet. And I'm a little bit nervous about seeing it. I, I got to be honest with you. Talk to me about Batman. Batman. Yeah. No. So the Batman, I was pleasantly surprised though. You know, were you? Um, I was no. So, so I'm. Hang I'm on, a big hang on. comic book fan. This is it. So, like, did you go into it with expectations here or like way down here? I'm a Marvel guy through and through. Um, Same. And even even before the MCU, um, at my mom's house, my stack of comic books is primarily Captain America. I have a lot of Hawkeye comics and a lot of Hulk comics. Um, the very and the lot of Spider Man comics. The very small stack is Batman comics. Um, that was the bat Batman was the only thing I was ever familiar with DC as a kid. Um, okay. but I went into it with mediocre hopes. Uh, I enjoyed the Joker. I was fascinated okay. by Joker. Excuse me. I was fascinated by Joker, um, for everything that it is. Uh, but every other DC movie with the exception of maybe one or two has been utterly terrible. Right. They, they, they've been hot garbage, Bad. but. Also, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of pers- uh, the kind of person who can't necessarily shake the person's uh, movie history um, before I-, I look at them in this role. And so like Ben Affleck taking the role was hard enough because all I saw was Goodwill Hunting. But now I have, I have Twilight Valid Batman point. and I'm right. not sure how to feel about the concept. So I have gotten in many an argument about Ben Affleck as Batman. Mm-hmm. It is my personal opinion prior to seeing the Batman uh, that Ben Affleck was the quintessential Bruce Wayne. He is the best Bruce Wayne. You can fight me about it. Anyone, so, I mean, he's got the jawline, listening, but I mean... He, he was the best pained. He has been through 20 years of being Batman, right? He, he, that is what Ben Affleck had going for him. It was good. Okay. His Batman, meh, it was okay. It wasn't Christian Bale Batman, but it was, it was up there. Um, but your question is like, how does the sparkly vampire, um, mm-hmm. how does the sparkly vampire become Batman? Is there a sparkly cape? Yeah. So when I told my mom, um, she's a saint, uh, that I was seeing Batman, she said, "Oh, I just love Edward so much," and I was like. What? She's like, Edward Cullen. Edward Cullen is playing Batman, the same guy. And I was like, okay. Sure, Mom. Um, Yes, Edward Cullen plays Batman. I personally would like to think of him as the guy from The Lighthouse with William Dafoe. Um, A much better acted movie. Uh, Set the bar lower, Patrick. (laughs) Compared to Twilight. I mean, Yes, that's what I'm saying. Compared to Twilight, it's a much better acted movie. Right, but, um, but compared to Twilight, there's a lot of much better movies. Yeah, I mean, you and I have probably recorded a podcast that's better acted than that. Here we go right now. It's better than Twilight. Sign us up, <laughs> Stephanie Meyer, for part Love five. Love these standards. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I actually, you know, going into it, I did not have super high expectations. I expected to like it. Uh, I expected it to be good because to be a Batman movie in the post Batman versus Robin world, it has to be good. Mm. Um, I, I don't think DC could release something that was bad. And if it was bad when they pre-screened it, they would reshoot over and over and over and over again until it's good, um, which they have done in some instances. But no, I actually, I came out of it really enjoying it. I, it was a solid it's a detective movie. It was a it was a Batman movie. It wasn't a Bruce Wayne story. It was a Batman story. I think Bruce Wayne might be in the entire movie 15 minutes. If not less. 
okay. um, and Bat and Batman has a has a lot of solid screen time, and the Riddler is a solid Joker and or a solid um, villain, excuse villain. me. And like it was just, it was a very solid Batman movie. Right. It was better. It was the best Batman movie since The Dark Knight. Okay. I would say. Okay. All right. I think that's probably fair. Okay, so I because this is the other thing about Batman is, is there's been because of, of the comics and the movies, there's been so many different portrayals of him there. There's been just sort of the, the bruiser, there's, there's been the detective, there's been the vigilante, and absolutely everything in between. And um, I mean, one of the things that, that we talk about as Christians in the movies is we, we always go looking for the Christ figure because I think C.S. Lewis kind of said this, that there is really only one story that gets retold over and over again. And so it's, yep. it's not hard to find Christian themes inside of movies, even from utter pagans, because yep. it is the story that God will continue to sort of work into his creation. Uh, but some of those, I, I think Batman reflect this a little bit better than the others. So we've got the, the detective Batman. So it, it, the actual like crime you no, know, yeah, he. This Batman is solving a crime, um, and you find in this movie you find Batman um, at a different kind of stage. Uh, Batman begins to explore the very beginnings, and then you have a little bit of a time jump uh, to the Dark Knight. But this is two years. Batman has been on the scene for two years, so you have a Batman that is solely devoted to solving crimes in the sense of he's the detective. Um, paired right along Officer Gordon. Okay. And so, yeah, go ahead. So this is uh, this this is uh, just to put this in my own language because I'm a narcissist. Uh, this is the the pastor who's come out of seminary. We've got the origin story done. He's done making sort of all the boneheaded things with like all of the vigor and energy in the world, but all of the stupidity as well. We've got a little bit of experience under his belt, enough for a compelling story. Um, yeah. We were not old and and gruff and sort of dejected quite yet. Um, so, so this is, this is the sophomore. Yeah. And, and yeah. And he's starting to realize that uh, he is a, not as uh, accomplished as he might think he is. Uh, and B that um, the city around him is probably a little worse, for, worse for wear than he thought it was. And I think huh. you, you guys coming out of seminary might experience that too, where you come into change the, the world. You come into the parish, you're going to change the world. And then two years on, you're like, I've changed a lot as the walls are crumbling down. And That's actually a, an important thing for us to kind of talk about in Christendom and society, though, is because we're sort of convinced that if everybody just thought like us and believed like us, if, if really we could have more time here, we would absolutely fix everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good sort of way to talk about what it is to be a sinner in society, what it is to have a vocation. Um, yeah. And so vocation for us is it's, it's the calling that God would put you in um, and the things that he's actually promised to, to do through you. And so I know that one of my vocations then is, is a pastor. Um, so it's my job to, to preach the gospel, to administer the sacraments, to visit the sick and the dying, to admonish the people, the holy living, to do all of these things. Um, and if you want to look at my works, I have broken everything that I've touched because I put my foot in my mouth, because I'm impatient, because I'm obnoxious, because I'm a narcissist. Um, and we, we sort of look around and we say, how are the wheels still on this bus? Um, it, it's actually a good chance to reflect not only on sort of our own accomplishments, but on God's promises to work. So um, I, I, I mean, like, spoiler, I guess, but um, is, is Batman an utter failure in this or, or is there actually a... a... No, I mean, I... I, I... That's an interesting question. I don't think Batman is an utter failure, but I don't think you would uh, see Batman in the same traditional uh, head hell high way that you would see him. You know what I mean? Batman defeats the Joker and he saves the day and everyone in Gotham is safe. I, I don't think you Batman leaves this movie in the same way. And I think that's one of the things that was most interesting to me about it is that the hero in real in the real world um, in a world that does not have actual superheroes, um, very, very rarely does anyone exit unscathed, right? Sin exists, and that's a fact. Um, and sin affects all those around us. Um, and I, I thought that that was a really interesting way to kind of look at this movie, is that regardless of the hero saving the day, there are still repercussions of that. Um, of what happens the riddler's actions have very serious repercussions that batman can't necessarily um snap his fingers and fix that's going to take right. time and, and that's going to marvel universe actual, 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. In a Marvel universe, everything would be fun. But no, this is um, <laughs> it's a chance to kind of reflect, though, that um, first sin break stuff. So when we actually say thou shalt not um, along with the scriptures, we mean it. But but more um, that you can endure that. I think that might be just sort of one of the best ways to, to sort of face a, a growing mature Christendom. Um, we, we sort of transition away from Sunday school all too quick, I think, when it comes to youth ministry. Yeah. It's, it's like we sort of snap our fingers, teach you the catechism, and sort of expect you to live in a world that is a whole lot more broken by sin than mm-hmm. we ever prepared you to experience with um, Noah and the Arky Arky. Um, but <laughs> one of the things that we, we actually get to do then is, is confess that not only are we poor, miserable sinners, but that Christ is gracious and merciful. Uh, that even though uh, there, are, there are things that are utterly wrapped and dejected by sin, this is actually where God still promises yeah. to work. That, that we get to talk yeah. about hope that exists in the pit and not just apart from problems. That's actually the kind of Christendom that, that does this kind of world a lot of good uh, because you're not going to find uh, short of utter um, just ignorance and intentional ignorance of all the problems in the world. You're not going to find a, a, a world that is just fine. You're going to find a world that the more you look at it, the worse it gets. Um, and so how it is that you're supposed to make your way through it um, with, with an identity um, as, as uh, a saint, uh, as, as uh, the baptized, even as, uh, well, as, as a Christian who has, is supposed to be a light shining in a dark place because Christ is the light set upon the hill. It gives us a chance to, to deal with sort of the gritty reality of life too. And that's worth embracing. That the light set upon the hill is not you solving all of the world's problems, nor does it have to be, because Christ upon the cross forgives your sins, and that is the light shining in a dark place. And that means that it's still allowed to be dark out there, and you're still allowed to confront the, the nuances and, and ugly parts of the world. But we do it recognizing that the victory isn't yours to, to win. It, it's not yours to create the perfect world. You get to deal with the reality that there are sinners out there, and you're one of them, but in all of it, in absolutely all of it, God is still at work to to, to endure with us through this veil of tears and under the yeah. glories of the life to come. Yeah. And to, to tie all that in together and to just get a little more spoilery, you hit on three things that, that actually played into the end of the movie and to the end of the resolution. Um, there is at the, the close of the movie, uh, Batman, uh, they're in a stadium, much like Madison Square Garden, uh, a sunken stadium in the ground. The stadium is flooding. Batman has rescued a group of people out um, and he's leading them in the water and he's holding a flare and they're following him through. Right. There's a lot of baptismal imagery. There's so there. much baptism in that. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And you think, and then you say that the light on the Hill and Batman is literally coming through this, leading a group of people um, through the baptismal imagery. I, I mean, I think like, so often when we talk about Christology in the movies or in TV shows, uh, we think that the only way Christology exists is, um, is Tony Stark snapping his fingers and dying for the salvation of, of, of the, of the earth. Right. Or it's um, in every Superman movie, there's always the, the Christological the scene where yeah. he's, he's falling back to the earth in, in the cruciform pose. Um, and we, we get stuck in that's the imagery of Christology in the movies. And I, I don't think we, we need to change that narrative because it takes place so many other ways. Um, like Batman leading them through in the waters um, and pulling them out of this despair and this death and leading them through the water um, and being the light on the hill. I, I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really glad you, you came to that because I'm sorry for spoiling the movie. But that doesn't explain anything else that happened. But for, that's that's a really powerful kind of parallel um, to make, and and thinking about that, I think is really like that is really important. I like that. It puts Jesus actually in the center of not just something that happened a long time ago, but something that, that is ongoing today. Right now. Um, yep. And that's that's so important because it's easy to lose Jesus to time itself. It's easy to lose Jesus to the, the cross 2000 years ago and the ascension that came after it. And then say, mm-hmm. we'll see him again on the last day. But until then, the best that we can do is sort of watch the old Superman movie and sort of watch that. that yeah. Jesus is still among the pit leading us out of death. Yep. And the more we get to find him, not sort of in the transfigured white robes, but but carrying us through the muck and the mire, uh, the, the more hope we actually get for, for the day and now. For sure. 100%. I love it. 
All right. Well, that's 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 enough Batman for for right now. I guess. Solid, man. That was good. I like it. All right. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Always. No problem. All right. We'll talk to you next time, man.